What is going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to put together your own catch and cook setup from Walmart for relatively inexpensive, and so you guys can get out there and do your own catch and cooks this summer. Now, if you guys have watched my channel, you know that I have a very nice catch and cook setup. Um, in fact, everything all together is probably around $150, but uh, I'm gonna go into Walmart here and show how you can spend about half that um, for, a, for a nice nice catch and cook setup. Um, you know, it's not as, maybe not as nice and slick as the setup I have, which I'll put in the description, but it's, it'll, it'll definitely get you by and you don't have to spend a small fortune to do this. Here we are, come here to the camping section. We are going to get some fuel for 574. We got this nice canister of fuel. This will last you like, gosh, a couple of hours. You have a couple of hours with the stove on of this and the stove okay out of the peak one stove so what i'm just gonna do is i'm just gonna go to um another walmart we have another one down the street um the peak one stove is going to be very popular and we'll just go down to that one and pick one of those up but we'll get everything else we need here uh including look at this for 14.88 you can get a 10 piece camp cook and dine set they have like some sporks they have a pan a pot uh, a bowl to a bowl for everything it all comes uh, in this nice little packet in a nylon carrying bag for everything so for 14.88 that is a good little deal there and you are all set up as far as that goes and then over here we have fillet knives in the fishing section come over here and for relatively inexpensive and in fact they're very inexpensive for 884 you can get like a this has a fillet knife with a sheath um, this is a titanium bonded fillet knife that looks like it might be a little bit nicer for 1284 what I definitely would recommend is that uh, don't get too short of a knife because having that long fillet knife makes it way way easier in the whole process now i cook a lot of like small trout so i can actually get away with a real small knife but um i would actually get the longer one so you can take care of the smaller fish easily but you can also take care of uh, the bigger fish that you will eventually be catching if you keep going out fishing and what i'm actually going to do this one comes with a sharpener this probably isn't for, for 884 this probably isn't like the most precision fillet knife but but i do have a really nice sharpener at home this comes with a sharpener and it comes with a sheath and so i think i'm gonna get this one i'm keeping my voice low right now because i, I still hate vlogging in public so anyway we're headed over to the grocery aisle next and then over here we have for 298 salted butter and i always go for salted butter so you got a whole you got four sticks there and uh yeah one pound of butter for three bucks you'll have enough butter for a lot of catch and cooks with that unless you're fisherman's life then that's about two catch and cooks right there then we come over here to the spice aisle i love the spice aisle for some reason you know what i just thought of something look at this look at this a little tiny bottle of Zatarain's shrimp and crab boil. This stuff, oh, only $1.98. Actually, it's kind of expensive for a little bottle, but this, oh, we might be catching some crawdads later today, so I'm actually gonna get a little bottle of that, because um, we'll, definitely, we'll definitely need this for the crawfish. Sweet, that is a great find. In fact, I had kind of forgotten about that because I just forgotten about that. Um, I was going to look for some crawdads. I don't know if they'll be out yet, but we'll we'll see. We're going to pick up for only $1.48 some salt and pepper. Very good deal there. And then the last thing we need is a lemon. These are 33 cents each. And so we are all done with the food. And there we are, guys. We are all done, uh, except for the stove top, which they were out of here. But fortunately, I live right between two Walmarts, so we're just going to go down the street like five minutes and uh, see if they have one there. Here we are. Peak one Coleman um, burner. And it's just that it's not the... We already got the propane thing on the bottom, but if you look right on the top there, all it is is that little device uh, that's the stove top. And it's for 1842. 
by the way, if you want to get this for cheaper, it's actually a few dollars. It's like 15 bucks on Amazon. So I'll put a link to this in the description. And I'll put a link to all this stuff that I just showed you in the description to Amazon in case you live somewhere like I have family that lives in the mountains of Colorado. So um, they don't have Walmart anywhere near them. So if you do live in a remote area uh, and you want to order this stuff online, I'll put links to it below. Here's one other little tip. Um, so if, you're, if you have multiple people that you're going out with, Check this out, they have a 24 piece dinnerware set and uh, they got, you know, like three cups. Uh, it's three of everything. So if you have a family, uh, this is a good option and it's only 24 bucks. So, um, you know, there are a lot of different catch and cook options here uh, as well. So make sure you look it all over real good uh, when you come to Walmart uh, to do this. So the grand total comes to since I had to go to two separate Walmarts, got two separate receipts with taxes and everything. $57.94. So you guys are looking at between 50 and 60 bucks, depending on all what you have to buy. I have to imagine a lot of you guys already have a knife, but um, so you can get all set catching, you all get, get all set up for a catch and cook for around 50 bucks. I was actually gonna try to keep this under $50, uh, but anyway, that didn't, that didn't work this time. But um, so we have our beautiful filet knife, stove top, plenty of fuel this will last you for quite a few and i just love this i love neat little things like this got our 10 piece camp cook and dine set lemon salt and pepper this for hopefully the crawdads are out i hope they are and of course lots of butter now let's get down to the river so here we are down here at a local river just i mean it's like 10 minutes from my house it's the boise river and uh so it's, you, know, you don't have to go far a lot of times to find good fishing spots. Oh man, this looks fantastic. What I'm using first today, a little spinner here, it's a MEPS. And uh, it has, I like that little colored blade on it. I haven't used this one a ton, but it looks really good. I don't know, I just, I just had a good feeling about it. So I'm gonna throw this little spinner. I actually fish a lot based off of feel. Um, if, if, I'm looking at my tackle box and I see a lure and it's just like, you know what? That just looks good. I will obey my gut feeling and it's turned out way better. I shed two modes when I did. Oh, look, I got one already. That is so funny. A trout. Hmm, he's a little small. First cast though. Look at that. <laughs> First cast of the day. Ooh, he got this one good. Boom, that is beauty, beautiful. Hey, little trout, oh, there he goes. A little bit too small to keep. Uh, at this particular spot, there's no size limit, but nothing else on the spinner, so I'm gonna try this, uh, the old standby for me, a Rapala jerkbait. I always seem to get bigger trout with this. Whoa, I got one, a nice one. Oh, look at that. On the jerk, oh shoot. That was a good fish. Man, on that jerk bait. Got one, got one. It's a good one, I think. Feels like it has some weight. It's not jumping like a trout though. Oh yeah, it's a trout. Yes! Boom! Nice little rainbow. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful rainbow trout right there. Great eating size. And we have our first catch and cook fish for our new catch and cook setup. <laughs> nice. All right, so now that we have our trout, um, I'm actually gonna go look for some crawdads. I look, flipped over a few rocks here, but there's not really anything under these rocks. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm, I know a spot where in the past I've caught them. Uh, at this particular river, it's very, very cold. And um, it, it takes a while for the crawdads to like come out of their burrows and stuff. And so even though it's a warm day outside, it's like you just have to wait for it to get a little bit later in the year usually for them to come out. But it's June 21st day, it's actually the first day of summer. And so they should be out. I haven't seen any yet, but they should be out. So I'm gonna go to this spot and uh, let's see if I can, let's, let's see if we can add some crawdads to our trout. All right, so we have this nice spot here. Um, usually there's some crawdads around here. So let's start flipping over rocks. There's one. 
Got him. Look at that. Not, not a big one, but first crawdad of the year. Check that out. Boise. Hopefully they're not trying to find anyone. Sometimes people start floating the river prematurely and the rivers can be really high and like um, there are branches and stuff and but people try to float this river way too early and then they ended up get, getting in trouble so. There we go, got one. There we go. Not an not a big one, but another crawdad. Just need we don't need very many today. Just enough to complement the trout. Let's try flipping over this big old rock here. There's gotta be some crawfish under here, right? I see some fish, but not some. Oh, I almost grabbed, oh wait, no, there's a big crawfish. I almost grabbed a fish though. Got him, there you go. Just like that. Let's see if there's anything under this rock. Actually, we'll flip over this one first. Oh, there's one. Oh, he's small though. He's kind of tiny. We'll just let him go. Let's hope that the big one is under this rock. Yep, there's a big one right there. Just like that, we got five crawdads. Excellent. That is how it's done, guys. We got our crawfish, we got our trout. Now, let's cook up our catch. Find a nice little spot somewhere, kind of somewhere in a wooded area, and uh, yes. Yeah. So we got everything in a backpack. By the way, if you're going around um, and you plan on doing this yourself, instead of like taking like a tackle box and everything, I usually just bring like a backpack. And I can put all my catch and cook stuff in it, and then I put in the clear plastic tackle boxes. I'll put all my tackle that I need, and it's just easier when you're shore fishing to have everything in a backpack than like the traditional tackle box. So have our backpack here and set all this stuff up. We'll open up our little stove here first. Voila. I should probably read the instructions, but whatever. Anyway, that's how you open it up. And then it looks like if if I know if I know my stuff here, this is just gonna screw straight in. Boom. Just like so, we have a little stove top there. Let's open our dining set. Very compact. <laughs> this is cool. That, oh, there's the lid. Oh, that's crazy. Both bowls come right out. We got a nice pot. This is perfect for doing a mini crawfish boil. Look at how perfectly that fits right on there. That is sweet. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna, we're gonna boil up some crawdads. So we just turn on the stove. Boom. Set our pot of water. I turn this thing up to the highest it can go. As you can see, that's a pretty good flame right there. This thing is actually advertised as being able to boil one liter of water in 3.3 minutes. And I didn't start the timer when I, uh, when I started it, but there are already bubbles forming at the bottom of the pot. So that's, I mean, that's really good for a cheap little Walmart stove top. So the water's almost boiled. We're gonna pour some salt in. Quite a bit of salt. We're going to add our Zatarans uh, shrimp and crab boil. This stuff is amazing for crawdads as well. It's advertised being for crab and shrimp, but great for crawdads. And I tend to overdo it with this stuff, so don't overdo it because this is a very high concentrate. That should be plenty. Now we'll add the crawdads. 
boom. These crawdads are so clean that are in our river that you don't have to purge them. The, uh, a lot of the places they purge them because they live in the mud, but here they, they live in this crystal clear river. Uh, they just live under rocks and stuff, so there's really no reason to purge them or anything. They're very, they're like about the cleanest crawdads you can get. And here's the way I tell that crawdads are done cooking, at least the ones that we have around here. There are a lot of different types of crawdads, but um, if the, uh, the tail is splitting away from the carapace there, you see that little bit of white, then, uh, then you can tell that they are done. And what's super nice about this little setup is you can see on the lid there, there are these holes, so it makes a perfect strainer. Just strain the crawfish. This is a great, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this is a great little setup here. <laughs> we got fresh crawdads. Pour off our crawdads in there. Gotta let them cool down quite a bit, cause they, whew. I always try to get, I'm, I'm actually really hungry right now and I reached in there just a minute ago. It was too soon. The shells stay hot for a long time. Mmm, that's good. That's good all by itself, but needs a little butter. Let me show you real quick how to eat a crawdad. For those of you who don't know, you just twist the tail off like so. And then you see that poop vein there. We'll take care of that in a second. Then you twist this little the t back end off. And then we're going to twist this ever so slightly just so it comes apart like so. And there we got the red the red meat and then we pull it out and there's the last of the shell and then as far as the vein goes there's like the guts in the, the poop vein and we just oh didn't pull out that time you know I just eat it myself some people like to uh, some people like to pull that out I don't make too big of a deal of it maybe I'm kind of used to it but I don't know. Anyway, and there we go. We got a little little piece of tail meat there. So an okay sized claw. Boom. We got a nice little medallion. This is one of the best pieces in the whole thing. Look at that. Look at the size. That is not bad. And that's actually more tender than the tail meat. In order to fit the trout in the pot, we're going to have to um, cut them up in a couple chunks. Just going to cut the tail off. Even though there's a little bit of meat down there, I got to be able to fit it in the pan. This little knife is not too bad. And there we go, we got a couple of trout chunks. And butter up the bottom of the pan real good. Salt up the trout a little bit. Whoa, maybe a little too much salt. Drop them in there. Drop some salt on top. Up some trout. Look at that, it is done. It has fallen off the bone. Ah, oh, boom! Look at that. That is fantastic. And I am starving. I always set out, and like by the time I actually um, start cooking and eating, you know, you fish, and then it's like, oh, well, one more cast, one more cast, one more cast. It's like, oh, but I'm really hungry, one more cast. Well then, I have to set everything up, clean the fish, so by the time I'm actually eating, I'm so hungry. Oh, you know what, I forgot. Lemon. Made a little hole in it there. We're just gonna squeeze some. Right over top. Oh, yeah. And then my pepper shaker. I can't get it open. There we go. I broke it. All you need is lemon, butter, salt, pepper, oh, and any any fish cooked this way is amazing. Mm. Guys, this is so much fun. You have to do this yourselves. If everything from the fishing, gathering of crawdads, cooking it up, being outside all day, finding your little finding a little spot in the trees to cook everything up. It is so much fun. Gotta try it. And you don't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be that expensive. So anyway, I, got, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
please smash that subscribe button if you are new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.